indications for a diagnostic peritoneal lavage are blunt abdominal trauma, penetrating abdominal trauma, and abdominal catastrophe. There are two methods for performing a DPL, the open or closed techniques. This module will demonstrate the open technique, but will make references to the closed technique for comparison. The incision for a DPL is usually placed infra-umbilically. In the case of pelvic fractures, pregnancy, or previous lower midline incisions, a supra-umbilical incision may be used. A small 2-3 to three centimeter incision is made through the skin vertically, just below the umbilicus. The subcutaneous fat is spread bluntly with a hemostat or retractors until the anterior abdominal fascia is encountered. In the lower midline, this is the linea alba and represents a single fascial plane overlying the peritoneum. Stay sutures of 2 ovicral are placed in the fascia on both sides of the incision. The fascia is then incised for 1 to 1.5 centimeters again vertically. The pre-peritoneal fat is then spread with retractors or a hemostat and the peritoneum is grasped with the hemostat. It is then grasped a second time a short distance away and tented up. The peritoneum is then incised sharply with scissors or a number 11 scalpel. The incision in the peritoneum only needs to be large enough to allow the insertion of the catheter or roughly 2 to 3 millimeters. Note the close technique uses an introducer needle to penetrate the three layers of skin fascia and the peritoneum. The modified Seldinger technique is then used to thread the catheter into the abdomen over the guide wire. The peritoneal lavage catheter is then placed into the abdomen aiming inferiorly towards the pelvis. A syringe is attached to the catheter initially to allow for the initial aspiration of any blood or abdominal fluid. If the initial aspirate is gross blood or has obvious enteric contents, the lavage is considered positive. The two stay sutures are then crossed to create a tight seal. A liter of normal saline is then allowed to flow into the abdomen under gravity. It should not be forced in under pressure. The entire bag is not allowed to empty, but a very small amount is left in the bag and the bag is lowered below the level of the table to allow the fluid to flow back into the bag under gravity. As much fluid as possible is allowed to drain out under gravity and it may be necessary to reposition the patient, possibly in reverse Trendelenburg, to allow fluid to accumulate in the pelvis. It is usually necessary to retrieve a minimum of 200 to 300 cc's of fluid back to make the findings valid. A sample of this aspirate is then sent for analysis. The criteria of a positive DPL for blunt trauma are greater than 100,000 red blood cells, greater than 500 white blood cells, gross blood or enteric contents. If the initial sample is not definitive, the fascia and skin should be closed while awaiting the results. The fascia can be closed by tying the two stay sutures together at the fascia level. If this is not sufficient, additional sutures may be placed. The skin may be closed with either sutures or stay